Hello everyone, my name is Andre Diacono. I am part of the Surface Duo team here at Microsoft. And my job is to make sure that you, the Flutter developers in the audience, can easily create or enhance applications for foldable devices and especially the Surface Duo using Flutter. My approach for today's talk is going to be a bit more practical. I will be enhancing or changing an existing open source application that hopefully you already heard about. It's called Flutter Gallery. Um, the steps that I will take in this talk will be first to have a look at how this application behaves on a desktop or tablet screen size. Um, the next step will be to uh, have a look at the overall architecture of the application so we understand what we're changing. Um, and then the third step would be to um, make a few small changes to the application so that it is behaving nicely on foldable devices. I will be testing uh, on a real device and showing you the results along the way. And hopefully um, by the end of this talk, uh, you will go um, home uh, with the thought that it's not so hard to enhance your own application. So without further ado, let's jump over into um, Android Studio. Okay, I have my gallery app open in Android Studio. Along with the main.dart file, I have some other um, files open that we'll have a look at today. But before doing a deep dive in code, Let's first uh, run this app in a browser so we can also see the routes that the application is using. I can see from the browser address that I'm on the default route. This is the home screen. It has a logo, a settings section, a gallery of case studies. These are individual apps uh, packaged inside of uh, the Flutter Gallery app. For example, if I open Reply, this is a full-fledged app and it has its own route, forward slash Reply. And then there are three categories of individual demos. So if I open one of them, I can see that this is a demo for a menu. I also have options to select what kind of demo for menus I want to preview. And these are some sort of tabs uh, because they function like tabs. Now I'm on the options tab. I can see info about this menu or I can see the code for this demo. Now, this application has an Easter egg. If you click the logo, an animation appears and the whole layout gets pushed to the bottom. Now, normally I wouldn't spoil such a nice surprise for you, but it is relevant in the architecture discussion that we are about to have. Now, let's see how this app behaves when I shrink the browser window. There are a few dramatic changes. I no longer have the logo at the top. The settings section now takes over the whole screen. The carousel with the case studies takes over the whole width of the screen with one item. And the categories for demos are collapsible and they show up one beneath the other and they are no longer arranged in three separate columns. And if I open a demo, I can see that it occupies the whole screen. If I want to change the configuration for a demo, everything gets pushed downwards, including if I open the code, it takes up a big chunk, but it still pushes the contents of the demo at the bottom. Going back to the code, there are a few things I want to highlight. First would be the routes. As we saw, forward slash nothing is the homepage. There is another path for demos. So each demo gets loaded from a demo catalog and it has a regular expression path. And then every other route of the application is dedicated to one of the case studies. The application, even though it looks quite complex, it has three types of routes. One would be the home, the second type would be a case study, and the third type would be the demos. One other thing that I want to show you is how this application deals with multiple screen sizes. So if I'm 
uh, searching here for is desktop. I'll see that uh, home.dart file uses a method called is display desktop, which it transfers to a variable. And then this gets used in the layout to decide if it shows three columns for demos or if it shows the carousel images one by one or multiple at the same time. And we can see this used across the app. So if the display is a desktop, then for example, the padding is bigger or smaller. If we navigate to the method definition, we land in adaptive.dart, which is a helper file and it contains is display desktop, is display small desktop which are used across the app. This in turn uses a package called Adaptive Breakpoints. We can see that this is an implementation of a material design concept. If I run the application on a Surface Duo in single screen, this is how it looks. If I span the application, I can see that it behaves as if it's running on a small tablet or on the desktop environment. What I want from this screen is that um, this, the left screen remains the same and I want the Easter egg to um, possibly run on the right. And when I open a demo, it mostly looks okay, but I no longer want the um, logo at the top. And I think I want to place the demo on the left and have these options um, open on the right because right now i'm tapping on the right screen but the changes happen on the left screen so i want to move everything from here to here and to move this demo to the left one other thing that i think i want to do is to open uh, one of these case studies on the right screen when I'm on the home uh, screen. So when I'm, when I'm here, I want the left screen to look like this. And then if I open a case study, I want the right screen to look like this. And if we get all these enhancements done, I think we have most of the application covered. This diagram is a very simplified version of the overall architecture. And since I want to enhance this application for foldable devices, I have identified different parts of the layout that can go to separate screens. First thing that we want to do is to have a similar function like this one, which returns true if we are on a foldable. We will call that is display foldable just to have the same naming convention as these other two methods. This in turn looks at media query and sees if there's a hinge there. If there is a hinge uh, and it's vertical, then it returns true. If there is no hinge, then it returns false. This, by the way, is not a property that you can find on Media Query. This is an extension method that I created to easily find a display feature if it is a hinge. If you also want to use it, you can find it in this package from Microsoft, which among other things contains uh, this extension method. This is where you can find the two pane widget, which we'll be using today as well. But if you don't want to use this extension method, then all you have to do is iterate over the display features and see if one of them is a hinge. It's not enough that we added this method here. We also need to use it in a couple of places. And the first place we're going to use it is is display desktop. We want is display desktop to return false if we are on a foldable. This way we can start with the phone layout on the Surface Duo because I think that's very close to what we need compared to the desktop layout. The next file we're changing is called splash.dart. This one manages how the Easter egg is presented. Um, for example, if we are on a desktop environment, then you can see a part of the logo because the rest of the application has a top padding of 136. In this case, front layer means the rest of the home screen. So the home screen is a child of the splash screen. And what we want to do here is replace the stack with a two pane widget if we are on a foldable device. This is the code that we add to this class. If we are on a foldable display, 
Then we use two pane and render the home screen on the start pane. In this case, it would be the left pane and the end pane will be the Easter egg. If we are not on a foldable display, then the layout will be just as it was before. If I run the application again, I can see that it looks the same on a single screen. But when I span the application across both screens, I can see that the left screen shows the same home screen. It's not spanned across both screens. It's just um, sitting here on the left screen. I can see the settings works and everything. I really didn't make any changes to the home widget itself. It is exactly the same. But the splash widget, the one that manages where the home widget sits, um, now renders this uh, flutter and select a demo um, uh, logo and text here. And if I tap on it, it starts the Easter egg on the right screen. So um, I'm quite happy with the results so far. But if I open a um, case study, I can see that it is taking over both screens. So we still have to deal with that. And if I open up a um, demo, I can see that the demo takes over the whole screen and the menu, the, the menu and information, everything still pushes uh, the layout down. So I'm going to deal with this next. The demo widget already has dramatic differences between desktop and phone rendering. And to achieve this, it had to make a difference between demo content and the controls up at the top. The code that you're seeing here is the way that demos render on phones. And as you can see, this is a list view, which contains first the section, which can be the configuration or the info or the code, and then it contains the demo. If I scroll up at the top, I can see that the desktop version also renders a demo. And if it's not in full screen, it also renders a section, but it does so by putting them in a row. So side by side, this layout is already very similar to what we want for foldables, but because of the small differences between the desktop and foldable layout, it is preferable that we have a separate else branch for foldables. In our case, this will use a two pane widget again, and it will simply put the demo content on the left as we discussed and it will put the configuration in this case named section on the right let's have a look at how that looks like on the device we again start with the application in single screen let's span the app let's select the demo preferably one that has a configuration and as you can see the demo is on the left, so these are the contents. And this is the section which changes according to what I have selected um, in the app bar. You can also look at the code. And you can, of course, unspan. And when you're unspanned, the application behaves just as it did uh, until now. So I'm quite happy with this uh, result. The last thing that we want to change is how case studies render because they are now full screen and we want them to render on this right hand side. And if we get that done, I think we're just about done here. In order to make the case studies behave the way we want, we first need to differentiate between two types of routes in this application. Some routes, like the demo pages that we just saw, will open on both screens, meaning that they will not open exclusively on a second screen. And all the study cases will open on a second screen, meaning that they won't open full screen or spanned. So I introduced a new uh, parameter to the path class here, open in second screen. It is false for demo pages. It is true for all other routes except for the home. So home also opens up on both screens. If a path has open in second screen set as true, 
then it will open up on the right screen. In order to achieve this, uh, I also changed the route generator. And if we open a path in a second screen, then we will render it a bit differently. In this case, we take the hinge if it exists. If it doesn't exist, then we just proceed as normal. But if it does exist, then we position it to the right side of the hinge. This is the last change that we had to make to the application. And if we run this again on the device, you can see that if I span the app and select one of the case studies, it renders on the right side. Now, the application is in a forward slash reply route. It is no longer on the home route, even though home is rendering on the left side. And you can see this by unspanning the app and seeing that the uh, only thing that we see is the reply case study. So if I go back and select a different study, um, it is rendered on the right. And I can also navigate from case study to case study, a use case that was previously not possible for users. The user can also still go back um, using the operating system gestures. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to make it clear that when we're seeing this, we are on the reply route um, or the case study route. There's one more thing that I wanted to show you, which is that I added another demo uh, to the list of demos. This one is a two pane demo, and it's actually useful if you um, want to use two pane, just as we did today. And you can see how it behaves on a foldable device, on a tablet or, or desktop, or a candy bar phone. You can also view the code that was used to render this. And I guess the funny thing here is that what you're seeing here is a two pane on the left screen rendered inside the two pane um, on the whole screen on the device. Now, at the end, I have a small confession to make. Every piece of code that you saw in this talk has already been merged into the gallery application. This means that you can visit their GitHub repository and have a look at the code that I just showed you. Um, in addition to that, you can download our emulator and run the gallery app to see for yourself how um, this application behaves on a foldable device in your own workstation. You can use the QR code that you have on the screen or the short link. They will redirect you to our documentation which contains details about media query display features and two pane. In addition to that, you can also find our emulator there and our design kit. Our team is friendly on the internet and among other things, hosts a Twitch show and also writes blog articles. If you want to be in the loop with our team, please follow us on Twitter.